Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna go into the gym, you're gonna go into the squat rack and you're gonna do squats and it's going to increase your testosterone. But it's going to increase it for a short amount of time. Is it going to actually do anything long term? The purpose of this entire video is to unpack the scientific literature to understand what exercises legitimately drive up testosterone in a statistically significant way. I am all for squats. Squats do increase testosterone, but as we are going to find out in this video in unpacking the literature is that it spikes testosterone acutely. Now, there was a study that was published in the World Journal of Men's Health that took a look at all kinds of different variables when it came down to exercise, body composition, and testosterone levels. Okay, so they took a look at multiple studies looking at cardiorespiratory fitness levels, looking at just general strength levels, flexibility, balance. They even looked at agility, like how athletic people were, and they were really trying to determine which one drove up testosterone the most. They found the average testosterone level was around 340 nanograms per deciliter, okay? And they also found that BMI on average was about 25. So what that does tell us is that, okay, well, we had generally speaking like an overweight group, right? This wasn't like a super athletically trained group. But the nice thing is, is that's really relatable to our general society. Now, one thing they did find with this study is that the one thing that was correlated strongly with testosterone levels was going to be the percent of body fat and the percent of abdominal fat. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit, but that was the strongest link above all kinds of exercises. But there was only one clear type of exercise that legitimately, in a statistically significant way, increased testosterone levels. All exercise increased testosterone levels a little bit, whether it was acutely or even some degree long term. But as far as statistically significant, meaning it's actually something that's noteworthy, there was only one. So let's explain these findings by looking at some other literature so we can understand everything. I think the best thing that people can do is pay attention to their glucose levels, pay attention to their body fat levels above any kind of exercise, okay? I just wanna make sure that that is known, that that is probably the biggest thing that we can pay attention to and probably the biggest way to drive your body composition the direction you want it is by increasing protein intake. There's some correlation between protein intake and testosterone levels as well. So increase your protein and sometimes the things will just fall into place. Quickly, a word from one of our sponsors. If you want protein, I put a link down below for ButcherBox. If you eat meat, then you gotta check them out. They are a big supporter on this channel. This channel thrives on the support from our sponsors. So if you wanna support this channel, check out ButcherBox, get your hands on some grass-fed, grass-finished beef, whether it's ground beef, ground bison, whether you like New York strip, whether you like filet, all at a very reasonable price that gets delivered directly to your doorstep. That special link is down below. And I'm very grateful to ButcherBox for again, continuing to support this channel. And I'm grateful for you by supporting our sponsors that support this channel. So check them out down below. So if protein equals muscle mass, then does the amount of muscle mass that we have actually matter for testosterone? Well, to a certain degree. You see, the amount of muscle that we engage when we exercise matters for testosterone. So check this study out. The Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research had subjects do six sets of 10 reps of squats or leg presses one week apart. Squats use a lot more of your muscle because you're using your upper body. Whereas leg press, still a great exercise, but you're not using as much upper body. Well, what they found is that there was about a 31 nanogram per deciliter increase in testosterone in the squat group compared to about a 26.9 nanogram per deciliter increase in the leg press group. Between you and me, that's really kind of splitting hairs. That's not a huge difference. But the bottom line is that we do see in the literature that the more muscle mass incorporated, the more testosterone increases. That doesn't mean if you go into the gym, you don't do the leg press because you're not gonna get the same amount of testosterone. It's really negligible, but it does matter when you look at the big picture. Moving your whole body is probably the best way to drive up overall testosterone levels, right? Doing bigger movements. But again, we're still in that resistance training category where the levels might come up and then come back down. So let's pivot for just a second so we can do a cool like global perspective on this. Let's look at endurance work. There was a study published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology it had endurance subjects or just regular subjects go at 100% of their ventilatory threshold until failure, right? So basically they just 
tax them aggressively from an endurance perspective, aerobic training. Even that had a 21 nanogram per deciliter increase in testosterone. Even that drove up testosterone. That's like interesting because we would think that strength would be the king of this. And it's not even far off from the leg press increases, right? What was interesting about the endurance work was that it dipped down below baseline after 90 minutes. So could the net net of longer term endurance work actually be lower testosterone? With all of this said, it comes back to the original study where we found from a statistical perspective, what was the most significant change? What exercise drove the most significant change? That was that World Journal of Men's Health. Okay, with this, the only, the only exercise that was associated with a longer term increase in testosterone was cardio. Cardio respiratory fitness was the only one that longer term showed an increase in testosterone. All of these exercises showed temporary acute increases in testosterone. Why did cardio show the biggest improvement for testosterone? Comes down to one simple word, body fat. The body fat reduction is the most important thing no matter what exercise you're doing. Now this same study had found that again, body fat and abdominal fat percentage was the only correlation with testosterone. And it was a negative correlation. The higher the fat, the lower the testosterone. Muscle mass and fat-free mass didn't make a difference. You could be built like a brick house, but if your body fat was high, there didn't seem to be much increase in testosterone. The lower the body fat, the higher the testosterone. So what is the best exercise for fat loss slash increasing testosterone? The one that moves the body the most and also emulates or is cardio related. Doing movements like thrusters, squats where you're like also throwing up dumbbells in like a shoulder press, big cardio respiratory movements that are also involving the full body and also building strength. It's really important to remember this when you're trying to get started because a lot of people will jump first things first to getting on the testosterone or trying to do things in the weight room that are gonna increase testosterone where sometimes it's the least manly thing, which is going for a dang walk or doing some cardio that's not super sexy and attractive but it's gonna get the fat off of you fastest that's gonna drive your testosterone levels up the most. So although you might walk into a gym and do some squats and drive up testosterone for a little bit, it's probably not making the impact that you think it is. As always, keep it locked in. I'll see you tomorrow.